Yeah, so, so we're all, the, the 3D teams all assembled here. Um, uh, I, I see, f you, you're all familiar with the work that Ian and I have been doing here, and you've seen it and helped make it happen. Um, so I, I'll sort of adjust my, uh, my presentation to uh, accommodate that. But um, what I wanted to do was, was kind of go over the basics uh, of, of 3D stereo production um, methods and theory um, and just just to sort of stress that um, what I've come to learn about 3D stereo producing and I've, I've been experimenting and, and working in this area for for several years and I, I have like some insight into it uh, I, I come at it from a um, an experimental artist uh, so breaking rules was the first first kind of method that I, I, I explored and just tried to find limits. Uh, but I eventually um, came to realize that, that observing the fundamental rules is, 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 a, is a key to um, uh, really having a, a, a pleasant and satisfying production. Um, what so I, what I wanted to do was go through uh, basic principles, and I know you, you're, most of you are quite familiar with, with, with some of these, but um, I'll go through them nonetheless. Um, and kind of, uh, to just kind of frame it as, as, as 3D stereo, how I perceive it is, is, is a very um, special medium in that it requires the viewer's uh, attention and uh, a degree of it, their cognitive skills to construct this this image space um, and and really kind of stretch the faculties of sight. So, um, what you know, it, in in some ways, the the parameters are quite are quite narrow, but they're also uh, the the eye can accommodate a lot of disparity and a lot of um, things that it, it doesn't normally do, um, but uh, so essentially the 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 overall effect is 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 one of intimacy as I understand it um, and a sense of of depth obviously. Um, sort of when when approaching the composition and, and uh, conceiving of a project, you know, obviously we, you'd be thinking of depth and um, a sort of placement of pictorial elements in a scene. Uh, but there's some consideration in, in uh, the approach to the, the, the whole endeavor of, of making stereoscopic production where uh, one has to consider as a camera person, as, as, as an editor, as a, a master, and as a viewer, like these are all sort of uh, have to be very integrated in, in, in considerations at, at, at every step. Um, so, you know, there's a notion that a lot can be uh, repaired in post. You know, it's a kind of uh, cliche of, of, of 2D production, but in 3D, it's 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 a necessary relationship where where there is you know the the, the shooting and the editing is is like a one and the same almost, uh, but they don't replace one another, and one can't really one if one's botched a shoot, one can only do so much, and and really you kind of start to compromise really quickly uh, in terms of image fidelity and uh, overall effect. Um, you know, you'll notice in, in uh, successful movies that uh, it, the 3D effects tend to be paced. When you see a movie, you see, uh, you know, the, the effect sort of gradually, you know, the, the effect is introduced to the viewer and, uh, you know, eventually there's, there's a sort of deep immersion and, and a kind of really kind of messing with your vision faculties. Um, now, what, you know, there's a certain like 
debate that that goes on on, on in you know among aficionados and and on on all sorts of forums on the internet these days about uh, par parallel uh, camera positions and um, this notion of towing in the cameras now uh, you know our our eyes are uh, naturally we, we we tow in you know that's we have a selective focus and we are uh, you know as our eyes rove around they, they are actually moving in and towing in at, at all points but this is not something it's a very uh, sophisticated um, cognitive function that is makes um, you know a cinematic construction you know just a, a tawdry uh, in, in comparison and, and and very limited so as a general guideline I, I would I would agree with the, the, the sort of prevailing um, attitude that, that cameras should always be in parallel except for these exceptions that um, I'll, I'll describe later but um, you know and in, in some ways the towing in is 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 the sort of art of, of, of stereography everything else is just it's just a very mechanical um, simulation of, of, of vision and until you are breaking that parallel rule it's it's sort of it's it's quite difficult to get um, really incredible effects so um, it's sort of like there's a rule but then the rule has to be sort of um, transgressed uh, so just for illustration's sake this this is uh, an example of, of parallel cameras and towed in cameras uh, on left and right respectively um, you'll notice in this illustration it shows uh, so this red and blue um, indexes the, the type of distortion that a, that a, a towing in um, causes. Um, you know, there are numerous tools that are out there that, that correct that distortion, but the, um, the overall effect is that um, by correcting that distortion, by pixel shifting or, and so on, one um, sort of makes the stereo effect null. So it's sort of, it's a, it's a deep compromise. Um, but if done right, one doesn't have that, that distortion, it ceases to be an issue. And I'll, I'll explain the sort of fineness of, of, of that later. Um, now, another, another kind of cardinal point is, is uh, the interaxial, the question of interaxial. And, you know, this is usually explained as, as our, our human sight has, has this sort of general, general characteristic of, of being our eyes being that far apart, 2.6 inches uh, approximately. Now the, the, the calculation that goes with that in, in terms of com calculating a stereo window is, is 30 times the, the interaxial distance. So it's about six, six and a half feet, um, that the stereo window that uh, one is required. And, and if one gets closer than that, it, it Things start to be very difficult to to process, and one one has all kinds of problems on the edges of the of the image, and um, you know it's generally this idea of, of shooting in parallel and observing kind of um, you know that kind of standard mode of of, of uh, parallax. One can play with the image and and kind of. Um, achieve all kinds of depth effects that are quite quite um, uh, numerous and, and uh, flexible. Um, so um, you know the, the essence of, of, of spreading out the, the interaxial distance and, and moving the cameras further apart um, it um, you know that, that's the element that creates the depth in, in, the, in the image. Um, and this is called hyper hyper stereo, and it's it's kind of typical in in um, landscape landscape stereography where there aren't obstacles in the foreground that um, you know cause cause these sort of disparate disparate elements in in left and right 
views, um, such as foliage or whatever in the foreground. Um, so one of the one of the uh, side effects of of having that hyper stereo camera position is that uh, subjects appear to be tiny. Like there's a kind of uh, shrinking of, of of features that that kind of make you, you see it a lot in IMAX movies. Like uh, things look look very um, miniaturized, and and it's a very uh, you know it's sort of Funnily enough, the, the analogy to the giant's perspective is, is uh, you know, a, appropriate and uh, pretty accurate. Um, so, one one kind of key element in 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 composing um, effective stereo cinematography is is as much you know the sort of camera positions and and, and so on as as um, a kind of play of contrasts of objects. So, you know, if, if you had a, a wide shot of um, a landscape and you had nothing in the foreground, it would just, what was in the background would appear quite flat and distant. But if you, uh, you know, had objects at different, different points in the picture plane, you, you can have like really, really pronounced effects you know, uh, you know, and often in a very confined um, shooting situation, you can really maximize a situation by just sort of subtle, subtle depth cues. So this is this is like an animated GIF uh, from a vintage vintage stereo stereograph um, animated and. and I mean, it's for people that, that that don't understand the concept of stereography. So this is this is uh, the next point I want to get to is is um, parallel negative and um, zero point parallax. Now, uh, what what you're seeing on a flat two dimensional screen is 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 the zero parallax, and there's no depth in this illusion uh, in in the way we understand 3D. Um, you know, essentially, your eyes are going cross-eyed, and you're looking at 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 one at at the, the surface as all one plane. Um, now, positive parallax is is the sort of um, a given of of having two cameras in parallel, uh, pointing pointing at a, a, a scene. One one has. Um, Everything is behind the screen, um, and negative parallax is is um, the effect of of things popping out of the screen, um, and this is something that is, uh, you know, a sought after uh, trick that has. Um, it's very easy to achieve on a, on a on a computer through computer animation or or After Effects or some sort of image composition tool, but um, in terms of camera positions, it's really the, the, the whole essence of, that, of towing in is, is the sort of the arena to, to, to deal with that. Um, and of course, you know, having too much parallax in positive or negative uh, causes eye strain, and, and this is like, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously a uh, what you don't want. Um, in terms of television, uh, film, and um, IMAX production, uh, you know the center line uh, tends to be a little different than um, than, uh, or one has to think of the center line a little different in that one is not dealing with just the x y coordinates in, in the z space. One one. Is dealing with um, the eye would will, will go to objects where the zero point convergence is is way back, and so if if, if one places a subject in the center of the screen, like like say uh, somebody who's addressing the camera directly, and if the zero point of, of convergence is behind them, the eye will just veer off to to that point because it's more it's it's more relaxing for the eye to go to uh, the zero point. Um, 
one one other element